Hi folks, today I want to have a chat about long line training. I actually don't like the word training because it sounds very harsh and military. Same as heel. Remember when we used to do heel? Well, some of you won't because you're young. <laughs> the older ones like me, you'll know. We used to walk with our dogs and have the dog on a lead and yank him around. Heel! Okay. <laughs> like, Talk about military, okay? So I've moved on a million miles from there. Okay, so now what I use is a horse lunge. Now, as some of you will know from previous videos, I had a very big Hanoverian horse. And we used to use these horse lunges all the time to teach a horse to go round and you'd stand in the middle and it would sort of get rid of some of its energy. So anyway, these are really strong, um, obviously, because they're designed to hold a horse and I use them for long line training. Now what I would do, I'll show you, right, is that I pull up outside somebody's house where I was, um, had an appointment to go into work with their dog and I would never have met this dog, only what the owner has told me on the phone. And in here I would have warm, freshly cooked it's treats, the best treats, you know, chicken and steak fats, um, lamb chop fats, sausages, everything, bits of liver, depending on the dog and what the dog liked, and it would be warm in here. And as I pull up outside and I get to the front door, I'd have my treat pouch and I'd get out these treats and put them in there and close them up and go into the house. Take this with me and put it on the work kitchen surface. Well, you can imagine, the dogs thought I was the best thing since sliced bread because as I walked in, and I'd always make sure that they were hungry, I'd ask the owner not to feed them from the night before. And as I walked in, I'm smelling of all this beautiful food. So I had this lovely dog perfume on. <laughs> they would be so excited because <laughs> they're really hungry, <laughs> okay? And so then I would work with them for an hour or more, depending how the dog, because some dogs really work fast, some are a bit slower, some are more intelligent than others. You know, I can say that, you know, there are some dogs that are very quick thinking and some that are not quite so quick. My Henry wasn't very quick thinking, my bull terrier. As my friend said, he didn't have all his cups in his cupboard. <laughs> it's a very good description, my Henry. <laughs> Okay, anyway, <laughs> right, so once I've done all that and I've taught the dog clicker, and it doesn't take long, you'd be surprised how fast they get the idea of it, then I would go out into the garden and start working and playing what's called the This Way game. So I try and change everything with game at the end of it. So the whistle game, the mat game, the door game because it softens it in my head and I call all the dogs pups because that also it kind of softens my my brain you know my my thinking so oh bless your little pup okay except when they're in Kevin then I call them Kevin now Kevin is when they're in adolescence and when they're saying to you Talk to the poor because these ears ain't listening forever. Right. Now, Kevin and Perry were, it's a comedy show in the UK, and it was two teenagers that were complete, they were horrible. Okay? So when a dog is mentally arguing with me, I change the name to Kevin, and then I, the owners then know that I'm having a major discussion with the dog. And the dog's going, I don't know who you are, but I'm not doing what you want me to do. Okay, so then I call it Kevin instead of its name. And that gives the hint to the owner that, that we're having a major discussion. <laughs> okay, that's just to explain how I worked. Okay, I never tell a dog off. No, no. You know, well, I try not. I don't, sometimes it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> but if you are negative, and if you keep saying to a dog, no, don't do that, and get down, do it. then they stop trying, okay? You want them, with Clicker, you want them to try. You want them to use their brain and to think things forward and move on and try new things out. 
because only that way will they learn what they get the click for and the treat and what they don't. Okay, so it's a process that the dogs learn to use their brains. And so you're not using physical force on the dog. Now, right, so I'm gonna go back to this horse lunge. Now, I tie it around here in a knot. Okay, so it's kind of, if you imagine, this is a thinner version. If you have, if you have it just loose like this, it will strangle you. If the dog takes off, look, I'll show you. <laughs> you end up strangled like this, okay? So you knot it, you knot it here so that it can't move. And it depends on how many people use it. So if there's two different sized people using it, you obviously have to make sure it's comfortable for both of you. So now I've got this 20 foot long line and this is such a simple game because all you do is you wait and you, even if you haven't got the line on and you're in the garden, for example, all you do is wait for the dog to come to your left knee. See, it just comes here. So you're rewarding the dog and it doesn't realise what it's getting it for. So you've got your clicker on and the dog just happens to come here into your left knee. So it's within, say, a foot or two foot here of your left knee. And you just click and give it a treat and carry on walking. If it comes to this side, it gets nothing. If it goes over there, it gets nothing. If it goes behind you, it gets nothing. And then here, in this magic circle, it gets a click and a treat. And it is such a simple game because the dog will work it out. Because it's thinking, oh, when I'm over there, I'll get nothing. But I'm just going to go and try and see what happens if I stand here. And what I want you to do is just give it a big smile. So you're walking along and you're just not taking any notice. And the minute the dog comes into that space, you go, well done, good boy or girl, and then carry on walking. So what happens is that the dog wants to be here. So once you start doing that in the house and around the garden, then you can attach it on to a long line and as I said have it um, knotted here and then attach it onto a harness. Now you must never use a long line on a collar because if the dog takes off and at the end of a 20 foot it yanks, it will really yank its neck. So it's always got to be on a, a harness. And I must tell you that you have to be aware that you, if you've got to make sure that you can deal with this dog. If you can't, if you're not confident that you can hold the dog across your body and make sure that the dog is not going to be able to drag you along the floor, then only then can you, you use a long line like this because obviously it can be dangerous if the dog does drag you all of a sudden takes off, especially if it's a big dog, you know, great day, you know, or massive German chef, takes off and all of a sudden you're being dragged along, okay? So, you know, I am saying that you have to be very careful. I can do this and it's up to you whether you want to try it, but I'm just giving you a warning. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you, and this is a top tip, I do like a top tip, okay? Now, there's nothing wrong with this clip, and there's nothing wrong with this ring. But I'm just going to show you what can happen. Okay, now see if I can do it. Is that sometimes, depending on the size of the ring, but a ring this size, it can happen to. You see? Now I didn't touch this. Let me see if I can do it again. Can you see? So, depending on the size of the ring, and it depends on the size of the clip, but sometimes it can free itself. So, you may want to, as a precaution, attach something like this on a carabiner onto a harness 
and on to maybe this part, this part of the clip. Do you see? So that this is on it, but if this does come off, then you've got a backup in case the lead does come off. It doesn't normally happen with this size ones, this size clip. Okay, it doesn't normally happen. I'm not saying it can't, but it doesn't normally happen. It's normally the smaller clips. So, um, I just, you know, want you to be aware of that. Now, when the dog, every time the dog comes into this space, it gets a click and treat. And so I can do this in any circumstances. So if I've got livestock in a field over there, I can work, still work with the dog, providing you know that the harness is on your dog properly, obviously. Um, but you can work with the dog in any kind of space if you think it's a safe space for you to work with your dog. But eventually, when you let your dog loose, what you want to be able to do is say, Oi, this way, and walk off, and he's there. So that's why I call it the this way game, because eventually when you say this way and every time he comes here, he gets a click and treat. And then it's a it's a word. It's a, two words that most people will remember. This way. So I call it the this way game. This way. And off you go. And what you want is him to be here. Now, I'm going to tell you <laughs> when you've got bull terriers. Or dogs like bull terriers. My blitz used to think it was very funny to take you out. So she would be, say, 20 or 30 foot away, and she'd be like a bull. She'd stand there and look at me and wait, and then I was standing there thinking, I don't know which way to go, because I know she's going to hit my legs. And you see all the videos on YouTube, don't you? <laughs> They go up in the air and land on your back. Well, that's exactly what she used to do. She used to come and take me out. I'm not saying this will help because bull terriers are particular. They like a game. They do like, they think that's funny, that game. Okay. But if a dog is coming at you at full speed, if they always come to this side, then there is a chance that they'll run past you on this side instead of as they get you going left or right right or left and you don't know which way to go either so you just wait and pray that they're going to come along on your left hand side and not take you out and somebody videoing them putting it on youtube okay so uh, now i will show you how i do all this when i get my pub but right, okay you get it like this here so to make it shorter so if I don't want it this length, I put it over my head, I bring it round here, and I tie it in a knot here. Okay. Now, if I don't want it at all, if the dog is running off loose and playing, and I don't want this at all, I can tie it around here at any length, and just tie it up like this, and then put it behind me. So it's out of my way okay so i can have it at any length i want to now you might all find that this is all a bit clumsy and a bit awkward but i do this all the time and i find it really easy the only problem with this one is that it's new and it's a bit stiff it needs my old one was about 10 years old, <laughs> but I decided it was probably best to replace it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but this is a bit stiff, but it'll, it'll soften. And once it gets a bit muddy and a bit wet, then it will be fine. So you have it on here. Now I just want to show you. And when you walk off, and every time the dog comes to your left knee, and you go, this way, it comes to your left knee, and you're walking off, okay? And then turn and change in a different direction. And turn to the right this is on your left if you turn to your left you're gonna likely to fall over this bit that's on the floor because this is just dragging along the floor okay so if you turn to your left you could fall over the line on the floor but if you turn to your right 
it's behind you. Okay, so keep trying to turn right and right and right and right each time. And if the dog, what you want to try and do is get the dog to always come to your left hand side. So if it comes to this side, it gets nothing. But you might have to try and help it and turn into it. Now I have got an old video and I'm going to try and upload that um, to show you exactly what I mean with this little terrier that I worked on. He was so sweet. He was, he was like a little cartoon dog. Just hang off everybody. Anyone that says hello, he'd be, <laughs> he'd be hanging off their sleeves and off. He was fine in the end. <laughs> he was funny. He used to try and try and eat the postman. You know? Anyway, what I did is that I made him love the postman. So, um, but I'll show you in that video how I do that. Okay. So this is a thinner one. See, this is a thinner version. So this is for young dogs um, or small dogs. So you've got a, a thinner version of this horse lunge because obviously you don't need this when you're dealing with. Um, a little chihuahua. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, the only other thing I use this for is I use it for two things: the this way game and the whistle game. And I'm going to do the whistle game in another video. And this is absolutely essential. So I keep my whistle on here and my clicker on here, and I have them about mid waist here barely better than this here. You don't want it up too high and you don't want it too low because if you have it too low the dogs can grab it. Okay, I've had that a few times. They jump up and grab it. Okay, so the click means a treat. One click means one treat and you put the word to it after it's done. So every time the dog, it's really simple. It is so simple. You click and you treat for everything you love that the dog does. And in the beginning, you do it for sort of loads of things, everything. And the dog then, it starts weaning off the bad things and then weaning onto the good things, the things that you like. Because it realises for all the good things, it gets a reward and all the bad things, it doesn't get anything. Okay? So if it goes a wee in the house as a puppy, it gets nothing. But if it goes for a wee in the garden, it gets a kick in the tree. And then you put the word to it afterwards so you're saying to the puppy when it gets into its bed you click you give it a treat and you say in your bed so you're saying the word for what you've just done is in your bed clever puppy okay so you don't say sit 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 to a puppy you see that all the time at pup, my puppy parties okay? you might as well be saying cabbages or onions they have got no idea what you're asking them to do. But if when the dog sits, you click and you give it a treat and then say sit. So you're saying the word for what you've just done is called sit. But I'll explain all of that in another video. Now, I'm going to talk to you about something that's a bit controversial. I know people are not going to like, some people are not going to like what I say, but I absolutely really don't like extendable leads. I despise them actually because mainly because of the damage they cause to people and to dogs the injuries. Now I can't show you all of the graphic injuries that I've got on my phone. I'm going to show you one but I have to be very careful that um, I don't get a strike by YouTube. You see that kind of injury? Okay, now I see that all the time. I go along the beach and here we're a tourist injury, a tourist industry area. <laughs> Look at it right. It's a tourist area. And a lot of people come down in the summer and they're in the shorts and they go to the beach and they're with the dog and everything. We've got a dog sort of um, where dogs are welcome, beach. And you can walk along and I guarantee it's not long before I see that mark on somebody's legs where it's wrapped around them, the extendable lead, especially the ones that's like this, like paracord. 
Okay. Now, the problem with extendable leads is not only the damage it can do, and I have been out to two different people. One where it had a completely deformed finger for one, and it couldn't be fixed. It sort of went up in an L shape. And another one where she nearly had a, her finger was nearly amputated because it, the, the line had caught around her finger like this and nearly amputated and the dog took off. But also, there's a guy up here, not far from me, and he walks his dog. I, I actually haven't seen him for a while, so I, you know, I hope the dog is all right. But he, from the town up to the A road here, which is like the little motorway type road, is a really, really busy road because everybody uses it to get to the A road. And as I drive along, my heart is in my mouth because he walks along with his big gun dog 20 foot ahead of him. And at the time, the gun dog was young. And I'm driving along thinking, please don't run out, please don't run out. And I'm driving, creeping along, and of course, the car's behind me are wondering why I'm going so slow. But I can just visual this dog running out under my wheels. Um, and I do see it. We've got a place called the Tarka Trail, which is a railway line. And um, it's now converted into a cycle track and dog walk and things like that. People run. And you do see it with people with these extendables. And um, as they, they just can't seem to control them. And they just, the dogs zoom off under, in front of the bike wheels. And the dog is, so you've got the person the bike and the dog runs in front of them and the bike's tripped over the, the wire of the lead, of the um, extendable lead. And I've seen a few bicycles shouting and swearing at the owners. And of course the dog can get very badly injured as well because it gets dragged back under the wheels. So um, one of the other problems with the extendables is that very often the end is very heavy and if the owner can't hold it or if it doesn't um, work properly, you know, if the button um, fails and they let go of this end and the dog takes off, then the dog is running with this thing dragging behind it, scaring the life out of it. So, you know, you got to do what you do. If you like them, that's fine, you use them. But I don't ever, ever use them. I always use the long line. And this, this is how, because I teach the dog to walk beside me nicely. And then I teach the dog to go play. So when, I, when I'm walking along, I want it trotting along beside me because I don't want it 20 foot ahead of me. And looking back saying, have you picked up my poo yet? Okay, I want the dog beside me looking up at me. Because <laughs> you're like his little servant following him along, aren't you? He's making all the decisions out there. And you're just following him along and he's, he's decided. So there's no communication between you. I want the dog. I don't want him clung around me. And I can't breathe unless you tell me what to do. I want him walking along beside me happily trotting, looking ahead, watching me. He's got his eyes on me. So he's watching for my hand signals and my facial expressions and my whispers. He's watching what I'm doing. So he's aware of what I'm doing all of the time. And then when we get to a safe place, I can say, go play. And the dog can run off and play. And then when I'm ready to go, I say, this way. And there he is beside me. That's the plan. <laughs> I'm hoping I can show it to you um, in more detail when I get my puppy, finally. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to do some more videos. Have a quick look on down below will be my book. You can have a quick flick through that and see what you think of it. And um, please, 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 please subscribe because this is a brand new channel. And um, you, by subscribing, which of course... For you old YouTubers, you know it's totally free, but for new people to YouTube, it is just, it's like joining a free club. You join and then YouTube know that you're interested in this particular channel and that they'll then promote it.
okay and this channel might help somebody in trouble I'm hoping that I can give some people some tips about how to solve their problems because I have been out to hundreds and hundreds of rescue dogs so this is not just about puppies I know it's called teaching pups but it's not about the puppies because with every dog whatever the problem is you go back to the beginning and start at the beginning and people would say to me look I don't need all that rubbish with all this clicker stuff I just want you to stop my dog jumping up it's not a case of that you have to go back to the start and start right from the beginning so the dog and you have a communication and the dog understands your thinking and the dog can read your body language and your facial expressions and your hand signals so that's the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.